Have you been looking for a way to stay focused on your goals and grow your MSP? Accountability groups from Rocket MSP can help. We offer weekly accountability sessions that meet online with a group of your peers. Your success begins with accountability. Go to www.rocketmsp.io to join your accountability group today. So I need to mark this episode as explicit content. Yes, yeah, but you might get um, banned, <laughs> banned from YouTube because of JV. Sorry, man. No, probably not. Sorry, Eric. Sorry, Eric. I'll tidy it up. I'll no tidy fun it up. in his home, he says. <laughs> All right. So, so that's sales objections, James. Sales objections. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, All right. So uh, – well, I, I posted on social media earlier um, that you know you're you're coming onto the podcast today. Uh, you're going to talk about some <clears throat> sales objections, and uh, mm-hmm. I will help to objectify you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been canceled yet. But uh, <laughs> all right. So so how how do you want to do this? Well, let's talk about what it means first right like what what what's an objection to me well, i mean with with my wife no just means try harder yeah i think that's probably <laughs> true, for, true for sales as well um i i this is going to sound really weird i love objections i enjoy what? i enjoy i love objections in the sales process objections are an opportunity to ask more questions Objections help me reflect on whether my product or service is delivering value. Objections have built my companies. I, I look forward to objections. I, to me, it's like I can't wait to see what they can come up with next so that I can come up with some, you've used the word combat. You know, how are we going to combat that when that comes up again? I enjoy it. Most importantly, the fact that I'm introspective enough when a client objects to something for me to say, Oh, okay. Do you mind if I ask more questions about it? Actually, builds more trust with the prospect than if I said, "Well, I just disagree and goodbye." Thank you. Goodbye. Right? You have to. You have to get ready for objections if you're going to be in sales. Get ready for it. Prepare for them. Start to build a list of them and start to uh, uh, come up with good answers for them. So when when I got started, I was terrible with sales objections. I, I would, you know, I tried cold calling a little bit and um, people would answer and it was scary because mm. I had actually talked to people. Mm. And I, I remember the cool. one time I said, uh, hey, so, you know, I'm, I'm Steve. I got this company. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd, I'd love to sit down with you and meet and, uh, you know, do it, do a, a network assessment. Mm. Yeah, I don't really want to. Mm. Oh, OK. Thank you. Mm. Bye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, your deliveries. I'm sorry to tell you, your delivery sucks, man. Like going in and saying, "Oh, hey, my name's Steve, and I want to do a network assessment." It's like, "Oh, it's my name's Steve. I want to give you a colonoscopy." I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to hear that, man. At all, you, you're going, you're going to from straight from hi to do you want to get married? And people are like, just people. It makes the hairs on the back of their neck stand up. They're like, goodbye. You haven't spent enough time building a relationship. You haven't spent enough time spent enough time building trust. And this is not a pain point that they that they get just yet. That's why that doesn't work. So what you're saying is I was doing it wrong? Yeah. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. You know, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> it is my opinion. Um, it is, but how, how did that go for you? Oh yeah. I, I got, uh, after, um, 40 ish phone calls, I never did a cold call again. Yeah. Uh, I never got a single meeting. Yeah. Uh, I, I got cursed at a few times. Um, uh, yeah. there were definitely some threats of violence. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Well, you're out selling colonoscopies. I mean, who, uh, how many takers are you going to get? I like to think of it more like an enema. <laughs> right. Well, then. Or just just a yeah. bidet, even. Like, you know, like, <laughs> everyone, loves a, 
everyone loves a good <laughs> spritz. <laughs> see, see, I I can't think of a time in the last. I mean, by the way, I did all of that. It's just a disaster. Sure. I've done all of oh, that. Absolutely. I've made, I've made every freaking mistake imaginable. I wouldn't be sitting here if I hadn't made all of these mistakes. So this is no disrespect to anybody in the audience. I've done it. I've done it. I've screwed it up multiple times. It's it's questions is the answer. Questions is the way to get people talking and finding out where they're at, what they're looking for, what their pain points are. And then at some point, that's when you slide in the network assessment because you heard something and said, well, the best way for us to diagnose what you're, what's going on right now is to do a network assessment. It's not a colonoscopy, right? First step is, um, oh, I just heard something that made me think that you really need a network assessment. And when you're ready, let me know. This is how it works. Here's a quick overview of how that works. And um, let's get that scheduled in, right? Yeah. So I've I've learned, um, you know, when, when I look at like, I'll just use web design, for example. Mm. Uh, if if somebody says, I need a website, mm. why do you need why do you need a website? Mm. Oh, I, I want to get found online. Okay, mm. well, uh mm. You know, I, I could just say, mm. all right, well, you know, I know how to use WordPress and Yoast mm. and we'll run some Google ads mm. and uh, no problem. How's 3000 mm. bucks? Sound good. Mm. Uh, you, you could just do that. But mm. uh, why, why else do you need a website? Mm. Well, it, it looks bad. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I can, I can use this theme. It'll look really mm. good. How's 4000 bucks? Sound good. Mm. Why, why else? Mm. You know, just, just keep doing that until mm. it gets awkward or you know they have nothing else to say you know um you want to draw Mm. out all of the answers from the beginning and then Mm. um out out of everything that you've told me what's the most Mm. important reason um Mm. why Mm. Mm. (laughs) these are Um, are, i'm sorry i know you but we're just we're just sort of freestyling right these these aren't the right questions they're like we're working it, it, working on your your questioning style to elicit pain or to elicit opportunity is a is a, a skill set. In fact, there's an amazing it book. Is. There's an amazing book out there that's quick and simple and easy that I recommend everybody go out and buy right now. And it's called Questions That Sell. This book was so good that I was able to take the questions in this book, print them and and tape them to my desk so that every time I was on a call with a prospect, I had the answers. I had the questions, I should say, and then I had the answers to their objections. And so, and we've gone a little bit into that, you know, this developing this out today for, for your audience to sort of have what are the most common MSP sales objections and what are the most common questions or responses to those objections. So that book helped teach me that. Yeah. So you actually so what, question, made a... what question would you ask? Sorry to interrupt. I would say to that person, and I learned this from another podcast guest okay. of mine, I would say that about the website, if your website was a person, what would that person's job be? If your website was a person, what would that person's job be? Would that it was their job to communicate the value of what you have to offer? Is their job to take an order? Is their job to improve your um your, your just your your personality and your brand is their job to educate is their job like what's their role what's their job title right Mm. and so from there they say well their job is to get sales right okay and so what does the average sale look like for you oh a thousand dollars right and how many sales do you need to get we need to get 20 a month right so twenty thousand dollars so obviously it's very important that we get this website right because this website needs to generate $240,000 a year in sales for your business. And so here is our methodology, and it's going to be $5,000, right, to get that done. It's chicken feed to them now because you've matched it to the value. Like, like what, what is this solving? This is solving a quarter of a million dollar problem for my business. Right, well, then say no more. Like, I mean, like when, when, can we, when should we get started on this, on this amazing website service? That we're going to provide to you. 
It's in all in the questions, man. I like those questions. Yeah. Those questions work a lot better than, why do you need a website? Yeah, and, and so it, it took me years to to care enough about the other side. Like when I started in business, it was like, I just need, I need money. I need money. Like we're, we're like, we're just, we just go in going like, I need money and someone's vacuuming. I need money. I, <laughs> I, need, I need money. And so we, we, we close our ears and we just blah, 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 blah. That's what we do. And it took me a long time to realize to just, first of all, shut up and let them talk, even though you've heard it all before. And even though you think you've got the prescription, just let them talk. Then start to think about, well, this is just another business just like me. And they need to make money just like me. You start having finan- asking financial level questions of the client. That changes everything because now you're a peer, not a supplier. Now you're up there with them. I'm a CEO of a business. You're a CEO of a business. What, what, where's the bottleneck here? Where's the bottleneck? And how can I help you solve that bottleneck? That's what it's all about. It's another great book called The Go-Giver by, I think it's Bob Burke, that um, I highly recommend people read as well. It's all about them. It's not about you. Very true. Mm. So you made a document. Yeah. Let's, let's <clears throat> talk about this document. Sure. It's, it's rough and ready and I'll polish it and send it out to you after this session and you, your, your, your crew can have a copy of this um, and I'm going to fill in, I'm going to populate it and send it to you. How does that sound? That sounds great. But what, I, what I've started with is what are, my, what are my beliefs when it comes to sales? So these are James's sales tips. The first and foremost, <clears throat> excuse me, sales is about win-win. Most of, uh, mostly what happens in sales, oh, good, you've got it on your screen. I was getting lost and confused. (laughs) Most, it's often lose, win, one way or the other. It's usually that the client says, hey, I'm the client and you are my subordinate and I will tell you what I want and and I will pay what I want and that's that. And so, so, the client takes the dominant position. They sit in the big boy chair and you sit on the little kid chair. That, that's not on. Sales is all about win-win. I want to help you. And in order to help you, this relationship needs to be win-win at all times. Second to that, in sales, it's be the alpha, not the mark or the victim. And we talked before about the surgeon. So as a surgeon, I've, I've never, I've ne- you know, I've had a couple of surgeries in my life. I've actually had a couple of medical issues in my life. I've had some of the best um, surgeons in Australia help with those medical issues. I've never gone in and said, oh, well, well, how much is that going to cost? Oh, oh, no, no, can we, can you do it cheaper? Never. I've never, I've never, I've never been referred to the top professional in, you know, the market for my condition and then had the hide to ask him for a discount. Like I've never, I've never done that. I've just never done that. And so you want to be the alpha. And they, these surgeons are expert at just looking at you in a very confused way. If you did that and say, "I, I just don't, I don't understand." Like the, this is the, these are the fees for the services that I provide. So be the alpha, not the mark, not the victim. And um, we can talk a lot about that through these objections. The next one is. As, as a surgeon, you're the specialist. They're coming to you because they need your help. It's as simple as that. Like they, they're coming to you because they need your help. It's not the other way around. You don't need them. They need you. you. You might need them deep down. You're like, I really need to get this deal. I really need to make, right? I really need to make some money. But at the end of the day, the, the impression that you're putting out there is I'm an expert in my field. You need my help. And this is how we're going to go about helping you solve your problem. And then, are you able to zoom in on this document real quick? Absolutely. How's that? Ah, now I can read it. Oh, good. Okay. Um, How do you get that feeling of being the specialist and being the alpha and aiming for win win? Is to always act as though you have a million dollars in your back pocket. And what I mean by that is be willing to walk away. It's like, uh, you need me. I don't need you. I want to work with you. 
I want to help you. I want to solve your problem. This isn't things that you say. This is ways that you act. So I always act as though, listen, guys, um, I've got an hour. I've actually got seven more meetings today. Um, and I, I do need to go, but I want to get this problem solved for you. So let's get into it. Let's go. So always have a million dollars in your back pocket. Don't don't be the victim. Don't be like, I really need this deal. They can smell it. They can feel it. And lastly, objections are awesome. Objections are how you build a better company. Objections require introspection. Objections mean that if a customer criticizes an angle that you've taken, you need to be willing to say that maybe they're right. I mean, I think Benchmark alone, five years that we've been through several iterations of our product and our service because of objections. We're grateful for objections. We love objections because it helps us build something. So then the next company that comes along that wants our service, that objection has been resolved. There you go. That is very helpful. You want me to keep this in? And then, and then so what I've done is I've just put down the ones, the ones that I've received as an MSP over the years, but I mean, I'm not sure how big the audience is today, but if you guys want to throw some objections at me um, and you want to talk about them, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So what, let's, let's start with some objections. I can't see you by the way, but is that because you're sharing the document and you're not sharing your, is this your, better? well, I, it's fine. I'm a very, <laughs> I'm a very visual, visual person, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, so so let's talk about these objections. Um, you said you've got kind of a, a long, it was a long looking list of objections. Um, people objectify you a lot. <laughs> well, they used to. They used to. Um, mm. And so that's how this list got created. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, but I'm sure that anyone that's listening in will have heard many, many, many of these objections throughout their their journey, yeah. So how how do you want to do this? Um, are you going to tell me? It's your show, man. Well, let's it's your show. Let's just go down the list, man. So Ooh. if if someone says, "Can you just drive over here for a meeting uh, to talk about my IT?" Yeah. They're asking you to drop everything. Yeah, and then yeah, you're not just the come elf. on over. That's right. That's correct. Um, so, by the way, I'm not a po- I mean, I know we're in COVID times and maybe for some areas, not a great idea to drive over and have a meeting, but I'm all for meetings. I'm all for meeting somebody, but not without an agenda and not without asking some qualifying questions before I get in my car, give up. I mean, I, I don't know about where you are, but going for a meeting across town is a half a day disruption to my day, right? Yeah, I would absolutely. much rather do... Teams meetings, for example, but even if it's even if it's a teams meeting, I would follow the same um, process, which is I would love to, I would love to meet. Um, do you mind if I just ask you a few questions about what it is that you're looking for? And some of those questions might be, um, how did you find out about us? Um, what are you doing right now? Like, how is your IT being managed right now? What are some of the issues that you're having with your IT? What other options have you explored? And this is a this is the most powerful one. In my opinion, what other options have you explored? What we're looking for is if this person is IT shop, IT shop shopping, right? And that's okay. Everybody goes out and gets X number of quotes for IT. I want to know: Am I your first, or am I one of five? Right? If I'm the first, I would say, do you know what? I would actually recommend that you speak with. I'm I'm an expert at blah. My business specializes in X. I would actually love it if you would have a chat with those other providers as well. And I would like to come in somewhere at the, somewhere towards like once you've got a few quotes for what you're looking for. And I would love to come in and have a chat to you about what you like and what you don't like and just give you my opinion and just, just let you know what I think. I'm actually, I've actually got. A, a, a bit on this week, but I'd love for you to get a couple of quotes and then why don't we meet next week? I'm not going to drop everything and come over right now is basically the sentiment. And so that's how I would handle that. I call that an objection. Some people think that's an opportunity. It's not. Most of these meetings don't go anywhere, in my opinion. So that's one. I see the the next objection is send me a proposal. Yeah. How many times have you spent an hour 
you've, you've gone over to that coffee, so you've already fallen into the first alpha trap, which is that you've showed up at their office and they've spent an hour talking about the, you know, oh, we don't like the router that they put in and we've had internet dropouts and he's too slow to respond to my emails and, you know, da-da-da-da-da. And then you're like, you've, you've told them, okay, well, this is who we are, this is what we do, and well, let's get started. And they've said, oh, no, 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 just send me a proposal. How many times has that happened to you? Too many to count. Right. How and many the sad thing is, let me tell you how yeah. long I spend on that proposal. Yeah, too long. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you. Yeah, too long. I, I made a, a quite a popular video, I think, a couple of years back where I told the audience that I've, I don't do proposals. I don't do them at all. I, and so I'm not against proposals. And I think everybody's thinking about this is different, but I actually don't do proposals. I do confirmations. Confirmation of the discussion that we had today and confirmation of the price that we agreed on and an invoice or an agreement. That's what I do. So the send me a proposal objection is, um, oh, I would love to send you a proposal. We've just spoken for an hour. What did I miss? What is it that I haven't that we haven't talked about today that we should talk about before I go away and try to guess, right? Before I go away and try to put this into a document, what did I miss? And that means I don't mind if we have to talk for another hour mm -hmm. as because I'm getting more, oh, you know what? What I wanted to know was what your SLA is. Oh, okay, well, let's talk about that now. Tick, that one stuff. I wanted to understand your price. Okay, well, let's talk about the ranges now. Tick. Now we've talked about price. Uh, I want to know um, how many people you've got. Tick, let's, okay, now we've talked about that. What else would you like in the proposal? And until they've completed that series of questions, I don't leave. And then I say, listen, I'm not going to send you a proposal because I think we've covered it all. What I'm going to do is send you a contract or what I'm going to do is send you a confirmation by email of everything we've talked about. And if anything else comes up, you let me know. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to moving forward with you. And I just saved a Friday night. I just saved a Friday night. How many weekends have you lost with family, friends, activities? You know, you've done this glossy document. You've spent hours on this thing and they don't buy. Or you send it to them and they go, no, that's not what I, that's not what I wanted. And it's like, well, we just spent an hour together. Why didn't you tell me what you wanted? Why didn't you say that? So when right. you send them that contract, what, what do you say, like, in the body of the email? Because... Obviously, you're you're going from we just met for an hour to f you pay me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just said it's a confirmation of our discussion. So there are obviously, Steve. There's like, by the way, I'm going to take us back to the first segment. It is so important that you go out and you build your network. This is a marathon, not a race. It is so important that you earn yourself a credible reputation. This is a marathon, not a race, right? It is so critical that most of these meetings that you're having, people already have, they're kind of like 70% there, right? Because they've heard about you from someone else and they've seen your name around and kind of like you've got some street cred, right, before you walk in the door. So some, it, absolutely. Um, thanks for the conversation. Here's my, here's the contract. Um, sign here. Let's get started. Yeah. But some is more like, thank you for, excuse me, thank you for the discussion. Um, what we talked about today was that you were having a problem with X, Y, and Z. What we talked about is how we solve that problem. Here is how we're going to solve that problem. Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Here is the price that we discussed. And the next step is blah. Let me know if you want to have another discussion. Otherwise, I will phone you tomorrow to just cover this off again. Make sure it's all clear. And then I'll send you an agreement or then we'll do whatever. They might, at this point, they might have some of these other objections that we're going to dive into. Hey, thanks for listening to part three. Be sure to check back tomorrow for the next episode.